pie. This is your go-to simple, easy pie crust. And it's based on my mom's recipe. One of my dearest possessions, in fact, you know, when you think about if there was an emergency or a fire, what are the things that you would grab before you'd leave? Well, this is one of the things that I would absolutely make sure I have with me is this beat up, stained, dog-eared recipe book that my mom gave me years and years and years ago. And I treasure this and in it is my mom's pie recipes and her pie crust. So today we're going to use mom's pie crust recipe with a vegan twist. So there's five basic components to making a pie crust. The ingredients are flour, shortening, a vegetable shortening, non-dairy butter, a little bit of salt and a little bit of water and that's it. Um, the recipe we're going to be preparing today is for a single shell pie crust. So this would be just one crust if you were doing an apple pie or something that you want to put a top layer, a top crust on, um, you'll want to double the recipe. So we're going to start with one cup of uh, flour and I would suggest using a dry measuring cup. If you've noticed measuring cups, you've got the glass ones with the levels on it and then uh, the metal ones like this, they also come in plastic. These are perfect for dry measure and you can easily scrape the top to make sure you've got the exact right amount. You'll want to use the glass ones for liquid ingredients. This was one cup of flour. To that we're going to add one quarter cup of butter. This is a non-dairy butter and one quarter cup of vegetable shortening. We're going to start with these three ingredients and we're going to start combining them. The idea is to break down the butter, break down the, the shortening and integrate it into the flour. You can use uh, something like this which is a pastry cutter. You could also use a fork but I'm going to use my fingers. So we're just going to kind of pinch the shortening and butter into the flour and we're going to just keep working it here. And as we start working it and getting it combined, the um, butter is less sticky. It's not clinging to my fingers as much because it's coated in flour. We're now going to add a little bit of salt. If you're using a salted butter, keep that in mind. You might not need as much salt to add to the flour. All right. So what I'm doing is I'm combining this until a crumbly consistency, uh, kind of a little pea-sized balls that's going to occur here. What you don't want to do is you don't want to overwork it and you don't want to overheat the butter. You don't want it melting. It's why we don't use melted butter or shortening in here because what happens is it makes the dough hard to work with. Uh, the nice thing about combining butter and shortening, if you used all shortening, it would make the dough too soft and it would likely tear when you're trying to roll it. And if you use too much butter, it will make it too hard to work with as well. Now we're going to start adding a little bit of water. And I mean just a little bit. I'm going to add maybe a, a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half and start working that in. What we're aiming for is to get the dough to all kind of stick together. We don't want it too wet. We don't want it sticky. We just want it so that we can get it all to kind of form into a ball. So by now I've added probably about two teaspoons of water. So now the next step is we're just going to very quickly work together that flour with the shortening and butter. And the way we're going to do that is we're just going to take the palm of the hand and just smear it out. Smear it out. Just push down and spread the ingredients out. And then you can use, if you have a pastry scraper, you can use that. I'm just using a flat spatula. And then just lift it and fold it together. We'll do this one more time. You don't want to overwork it. Again, you don't want to break down or overheat the butter and the flour too much. So now we're going to roll it into a ball, put it in the bowl, and we're going to pop this in the fridge and let it chill for about one to two hours, after which we will then roll it out and we'll put it into our pie plate. Okay, so it's now time to roll out our 
pastry. It's been in the refrigerator for a couple of hours. I had it wrapped up in a little bit of um, clear plastic wrap while it was in the refrigerator to keep it from drying out. And uh, now I'm about to roll it out. And if you have um, just a very clean, flat counter, that would be uh, suitable for rolling or if you have a big cutting board or even better yet, I suggest getting one of these really handy little silicone mats. They're great because they help keep the dough from sticking. And they also have all these pre-measured uh, templates on it for different sizes of pie plates, even for cookies. There's little pre-measured areas if you do rolled cookies. So the pie plate I'm using is about a nine and a half inch pie plate. And so I'm gonna roll it out to probably about 11 inches on here. So I'd rather have too much because we can always trim it around the edges. So I've dusted, even though it doesn't require much, I just dusted the um, mat with a little bit of flour. And now I'm gonna start rolling out the dough. Um, a lot of people like to use just a simple, uh, what would be like a, a, a dowel. I was watching a Julia Child episode where she had her husband cut down an old broom handle. Hopefully he cleaned it really well. But she used a broom handle as her rolling pin. I'm using my great-grandmother's rolling pin, so a lot of pies and a lot of pastries have been prepared with this rolling pin over the years. So I am putting a little bit of, I'm dusting my rolling pin as well with a little flour just to kind of help make the whole process a little less sticky. I don't want any of this pie dough to cling to the pin while I'm rolling it out. This is good exercise. I'm getting my upper body workout here because you really do need to put a little weight on it when you're rolling it because this pie crust is going to get fairly thin. So another thing I like about these little silicone mats is it makes it easier when I have to transfer the dough into the pie plate. So all I have to do is just fold it over like so, kind of gently peel it away from the mat. All right going to bring my pie plate over and my rolling pin with my dough and place it over the top and over it goes just like that and then I'm going to just kind of gently ease it into the pan not pressing too hard because I don't want to tear the crust you may have noticed that I did not butter or grease the inside of the pie plate. You don't need to because, as you know, we put quite a bit of butter and shortening into the crust itself, so it's not going to have a tendency to stick. But it's more reason you don't want to tear this crust because you don't want the filling to seep underneath the crust and between the crust and the pie plate. That also helps keep it from sticking if you don't allow that to happen. Once you get your pie crust in your pie pan and you've got it all you know, fairly well pressed down, then you want to trim away the excess. So just go around the edge of your plate with a sharp knife and it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, mine is anything but. You'll find as you do this more often, it just gets easier and easier and it gets a little bit better looking each time. Now, a very simple way to finish the edge is just using a fork. So that's what we're gonna do today. I mean, you can do fancy fluting if you want and pinching the edges and creating pretty little scallop patterns. I and mean, you can get as decorative and creative as you want, but just for simplicity and ease, and I like things that are simple and quick, um, I find this gives a rather nice, clean look to the edge of the crust. There we go. All right, so there's our prepared pie crust ready to go. If you have a recipe that calls for having a pre-baked pie shell, the trick is, is you wanna make sure that while, while the pie shell is baking, that it doesn't lift up or bubble up on the bottom. And there's a couple of ways that you can keep that from happening. One is you can simply take a fork and just prick the bottom of the pie shell many times all over on the bottom using just the tip of the fork. Another way you can do it is put a piece of pa parchment paper in the bottom of your um, pie shell and then you fill it with either dried beans. If you have a bag of dried beans in your cupboard, just fill the bottom of it. It weights the bottom of it. 
There's also what are called pie weights that are almost like marbles that you put in the bottom of your pie shell on top of parchment paper. So while it's baking, it holds the pie crust down into the bottom of the um, pie plate. So that's all you have to do. And then you just pop it in a preheated oven uh, set at 450 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes. Just keep an eye on it. Make sure that the crust isn't getting too brown. If it looks golden brown, it's probably perfect. And then you can pull it out and then fill it with uh, whatever type of pie filling you're going to be using. Hey, thanks for watching. And if you liked what you saw, please subscribe. And if you've already subscribed, then please share with your friends.